The origins of intelligence systems are humble and relatively unexciting. Young developer Toru Narahiro was hired by Nintendo in the 1980s to help port Famicom Disk System games to regular cartridges so that those games could come out in America and Europe, where the disk system didn't exist. Narahiro's work was largely in the background, but Nintendo was pleased with it, and his young company wound up being an important helper for Nintendo in the NES days. Intelligent systems pitched in to help with games when they needed to be fixed or ported. As time wore on, they even made first and third party dev kits, something that the company continued to do for many years. Narahiro didn't just want to help with odds and ends though, and by the late 80s, he started making his own games. With ample help from Nintendo R&D 1, Narahiro designed Famicom Wars in 1988 and the first Fire Emblem game in 1990. Fire Emblem was a game that pushed the Famicom to its limits, but fortunately, Intelligent Systems was a company that had spent the last six or so years mastering the system. The team wound up using a part of the Famicom's system memory to save the game. Intelligent Systems continued to work closely with Gunpei Yokoi's R&D 1 team in the early 90s, working on a number of Game Boy games including Game Boy Wars, Alleyway, and The Frog for Whom the Bell Tolls. In 1992, the team got their shot to make a game on their own in Fire Emblem Gaiden, the side story to the previous game on Famicom. Directed not by someone from R&D 1 like the earlier Wars and Fire Emblem games, Gaiden was instead directed by Intelligent Systems' Shouzo Kaga. Most people might only know Fire Emblem Gaiden because of its 2017 3DS remake, Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. Kaga was instrumental in Fire Emblem games for the rest of the 1990s, working on a remake-slash-sequel of the original that came out in 1994, as well as two full sequels, 1996's Genealogy of the Holy War and 1999's Thracia 776. Yes, a Super Famicom game came out in Japan in 1999, though that's mostly because Thracia 776 was part of a crazy and weird rewritable cartridge system Nintendo toyed with on the Super Famicom, but that's best left for another video. Kaga also worked on a Satellaview Fire Emblem game as well, but eventually he left Intelligent Systems in 1999 to start his own company called Tirnanog Co. After making strategy games with a fantasy setting for a decade, Kaga went on to make a strategy game in a fantasy setting with the publisher Enterbrain. His first project, called Emblem Saga, was soon in development for PlayStation, set for a 2001 release. With such a similar name and gameplay style, Nintendo was none too pleased with the existence of the game, so they sought to sue Tiernanog and Enterbrain. Nintendo's first legal volley was a victory, and Emblem Saga was renamed to Tier Ring Saga, though it was still allowed to release in spring 2001 in Japan. Over the next few years, Nintendo tried to bar the game from being sold while seeking damages from the companies involved. Eventually, Nintendo did receive some damages, but Tier Ring Saga was allowed to stay on the shelves. The legal mess is said to be the reason why Fire Emblem 64 was shelved, and also why projects like Mighty No. 9 and Bloodstained are allowed to exist, even though they're so similar to Mega Man and Castlevania. With that low point in Intelligent Systems history out of the way, let's get to the meat of this history. Throughout the rest of the 90s, Intelligent Systems was Nintendo R&D 1's right-hand company, working with them on some Super Nintendo Zapper games, namely Battle Clash, as well as the Super Nintendo classic Tetris Attack, and even the Virtual Boy game Galactic Pinball. It wasn't until the Nintendo 64 that Intelligent Systems started solely developing more games than just Fire Emblem and the Wars series, and even that took a long time to happen. Super Mario RPG 2, or what we now know as Paper Mario, was first revealed in 1997, a year after Super Mario RPG launched. The game featured a signature art style that looked like paper, which came from company newcomer Naohiko Aoyama, who would go on to direct Paper Mario Sticker Star and Color Splash. But on the Nintendo 64, Paper Mario was directed by Ryota Kawade, a game designer at Intelligence Systems that got his start helping out on Tetris Attack, Galactic Pinball, and the Super Nintendo port of Wario's Woods. Paper Mario was his debut directorial effort, and he later went on to direct The Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario. Around the launch of the Game Boy Advance, the company, led by Naruhiro and Makoto Shimojo, brought the Wars series to the platform and to the West for the first time as Advance Wars. Naruhiro's final director role was for the first Fire Emblem game post-Kaga, the Japan-only Fire Emblem The Binding Blade, which was also tied into Fire Emblem's eventual Western debut. Since that 2002 Game Boy Advance game, Naruhiro has been a supervisor or producer on a variety of intelligent systems and Nintendo projects, ranging from Fire Emblem to the Smash Bros. series. Shimojo, who worked in a high role on Advance Wars and Binding Blade, took over Advance Wars, directing both Advance Wars 2, Black Hole Rising, and the DS game Advance Wars Dual Strike, before fading away from the series as the series started to fade away itself. Taking over for the next Wars game was Daisuke Nakajima. 
the director of the to-date final game of the series, Advance Wars Days of Ruin. It took the series in a bold, new, more mature direction that seemed to be geared to appeal to the Western markets, so much so that the initial DS release skipped Japan. He then did a complete 180 after that darker take on a cartoony franchise and worked on the forgotten DSiWare strategy game Dragon Quest Wars. Since then, Nakajima has seemingly stepped away from hands-on development and is involved with project management and marketing. The 2003 Fire Emblem game on Game Boy Advance, translated as Blazing Sword from the Japanese release, was the first in the West, mostly making the trip over thanks to the success of Marth and Roy as playable characters in Super Smash Bros. Melee. At the helm for that game was Taiko Kaneda, who was seen as the shepherd of the series at Intelligent Systems for a few years after Kaga's departure, and Narahiro's rise to supervisor Heaven. Kaneda was the director on that first Game Boy Advance game, and her last title was the Wii game Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Intelligent Systems was busy in the early Game Boy Advance days, as they also took the helm of a series that was new to them, with Mario Kart Super Circuit. Takashi Ando, who was only credited on Paper Mario before this, was a director on the title alongside a similarly new designer, Yukio Morimoto. Ando and Morimoto's roles at Intelligent Systems never crossed the Fire Emblem series, as they bounced around various series including the WarioWare and Paper Mario games, and also quirky, weird projects like Face Training and Eco Shooter Plant 530. In general, Intelligent Systems aided Nintendo with various WarioWare titles over the years, including the party-focused port to GameCube, the transcendent WarioWare Twisted, and the recent 3DS game WarioWare Gold. Naoko Mori is one of those WarioWare-focused developers at Intelligent Systems. She's been at the company since 2000, and has almost solely been focused on WarioWare. Her directorial debut was the woeful DSiWare launch game WarioWare Snapped in 2008, and moved on to Game & Wario, a Wii U game that's better than its initial reception might suggest. Her most recent work was on Paper Mario Color Splash and WarioWare Gold. In the mid-2000s, Fire Emblem was gaining traction outside of Japan. Following the 2003 GBA debut, Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones came out in 2005. One of the major players in the creation of Sacred Stones was Sachiko Wada, who joined Intelligent Systems in the 1990s. Wada was instrumental in the design and art for the final GBA Fire Emblem game, as well as the home console follow-ups, 2005's GameCube game Path of Radiance and the 2007 Wii game Radiant Dawn. Since 2007, Wada's role appears to be primarily character art-driven, as she has most recently worked on the artwork for the Japan-only card game Fire Emblem Cypher and the mobile game Fire Emblem Heroes. Working with Wada on Path of Radiance was Masayuki Horikawa, who started at Intelligent Systems around the same time. His work with the series diverged from Wada's after the GameCube game, though. He directed the 2008 DS remake Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, and went on to help with the Japan-only DS remake Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem. Horikawa was a mainstay on the 3DS era of Fire Emblem as well, working on the scenario and planning for Awakening and Fates. He was even a liaison to the team at Atlas for Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Going back to the end of the Wii and DS era, Fire Emblem was in transition. Sales were declining, and the initial fervor in the West during the early 2000s was fading away. As work started up on the project that would later become the series' 3DS debut, Fire Emblem Awakening, Nintendo informed the team at Intelligent Systems that this would be the final Fire Emblem game if it didn't clear a certain sales threshold. That news sent the development team into a minor frenzy, and they tried to cram as much as they possibly could into Awakening to try and stave off the death of the franchise. At the head of this was a pair of longtime Intelligent Systems developers that were new to leading projects. Project manager Masahiro Higuchi had been at the company since the 90s, but primarily as an artist. This was only his second more managerial role after working on New Mystery of the Emblem. Mirroring Higuchi's path, Kohei Maeda worked on scenario designs starting with the first Game Boy Advance game. His directorial debut was New Mystery of the Emblem. Those two worked with Nintendo to make Fire Emblem Awakening the best Fire Emblem game they could. The future of the series depended on it. Fortunately for the Fire Emblem team at Intelligent Systems and all the fans out there, Awakening was a huge success, ensuring a future for the series as well as garnering a lot of new fans. Maeda and Higuchi went on to lead the development of 2016's Fire Emblem Fates. Higuchi essentially became the series producer for Fire Emblem, working as the producer on Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Maeda, after Fates, worked on the mobile game Fire Emblem Heroes. So far, every single developer we've discussed has been Japanese, which makes sense since Intelligent Systems is a Japanese company. The one exception that we'll discuss is Paul Petrashu, who attentive fans might remember as the codename Steam Creator. 
Aside from that forgotten 3DS RPG, Petrashu also contributed to Fire Emblem Fates and his team from Codename Steam was the core that made Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. The lead of the Fire Emblem Echoes team was Toshiyuki Kusakihara, who got his start with Fire Emblem on the cancelled follow-up to Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. He stayed close to the series as an artist and art director for the better part of the next decade until he was the director for Echoes. Kusakihara followed that up as the director for the console return of Fire Emblem in Fire Emblem Three Houses. He came full circle having worked on what could have been a console Fire Emblem so many years ago. That brings us to the present day. The recent release of Three Houses is actually most notable for how little of intelligence systems there really is in the game's development staff. Of the couple hundred names in the newest Fire Emblem's credits, only seven of them were from intelligence systems, with the majority of the work being done by Koei Tecmo instead. Among the returning IS staff is Kusakihara, who serves as the game's co-director alongside Nintendo's own Genki Yokota. Yokota's resume is mostly made up of Fire Emblem games, but he also co-directed Xenoblade Chronicles, Fossil Fighters, and Disaster Day of Crisis. Masahiro Higuchi returned as the producer, Paul Petrashu worked on the art with Mao Yamanaka and Kana Tsukiyama, and the music and sound design were handled by in-house composers Takaru Kanazaki and Hiroki Morishita. Those six, plus Kusakihara, were the only employees of Intelligence Systems on the game's entire staff. Which begs the question, what exactly are the near 200 staff members of Intelligence Systems working on? Hopefully we'll get the answer to that in time, but while we're here, let's take a look at some of the people who stepped in for Intelligence Systems on Fire Emblem Three Houses, most of which are from Koei Tecmo. The game's technical director was Satoshi Ubikata, known for his work on the Musou series, beginning with Dynasty Warriors 3 Extreme Legends. He's joined by a number of other Musou veterans, such as lead game designer Naoko Horie and CG directors Yuta Masunaga and Nobuo Miyoshi. This is no big surprise, since Kusakihara and Yokota both said in a recent Famitsu interview that Fire Emblem Warriors was a big influence in their decision to work with Koei Tecmo on Three Houses. Another Musou veteran was the lead scenario writer, Yuki Ikeno, who also has credits writing the software manuals for Dead or Alive 6, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 13, and, of all things, Pokemon Conquest. For a bit more variety and past experience, we can look to lead programmer Atsushi Ota. As well as adding to the laundry list of Musou fingerprints on Three Houses, Ota has a few eclectic credits on his resume. He's obviously multi-talented as he served as CG director on a number of Musou games, wrote the event script for Valkyrie Profile 2, and worked in QA on Ninja Gaiden 2. He's also done work on games for a variety of companies, lending his expertise to Nintendo for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Square Enix for Final Fantasy XIV, and Sega for Sonic and the Black Knight. In fact, his earliest work on Nintendo was as an engineer for Metroid Other M. I mean, the technology in that game was pretty solid, wasn't it? Finally, the character design for the game was outsourced to freelancer Chinatsu Kurahana. Kurahana is best known for her work on the visual novel series Uta no Prince-sama, which has evolved into a multimedia juggernaut with enough revenue to make it into the top 15 most lucrative franchises in Japan. Kurahana has served as the character designer for the entire Prince Sama series, but also worked on the anime series Aquarion Evil and Samurai Flamenco. And with the torch passed to Koei Tecmo for now, that's about it for the history of intelligence systems. With no announced games on the horizon, it's a mystery where the developers of Fire Emblem, Paper Mario, and WarioWare are going to go next. With so much of their most recent game outsourced to another studio entirely, we can only imagine that we'll be seeing something from Intelligence Systems sooner or later, but for now the closest we've got is their ongoing development on Fire Emblem Heroes. With that, we'll wrap up this installment of Know Your Developers. What studio would you like to learn about next? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, also let us know what your favorite game from Intelligence Systems is. If you liked this video and want to see more, consider subscribing to Nintendo World Report TV, and you can also help support this channel and our website by visiting our Patreon. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more, all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.